to show solidarity with Palestine. My name is Sarah and I'm with the Portland, um, Portland Boycott, Divestment and Sanctions Coalition, also part of the International Socialist Organization. And I'm going to be in introducing our awesome lineup of speakers that we have for you today. But first I just want to say a couple words. Because we know, we're here today because we know that what Israel is saying and what the U.S. is saying about the reasons for the Israel's latest attack on Gaza that has already killed over 40 Palestinian civilians and injured hundreds of people is missing the real context that, that's actually the, the ongoing siege of Gaza that isn't being talked about in the media. Because Israel's latest attack on Gaza is not because of some rockets that were launched by Hamas that broke the, the, um, the truce that Israel had actually been respecting. But the fact of the matter is that Israel's latest attack on Gaza is part of the ongoing war and occupation against Palestinians that has been happening since 1948 and the Nakba, the Palestinian catastrophe, that has killed and displaced millions of Palestinians. And we know that the the, what the Palestinians are facing is not a conflict between two equal sides. And it's not an ongoing, century-long religious conflict, but the, the real problem that Palestinians are facing is, is, is the problem is Israeli settler colonial society and the problem of ethnic cleansing and, and land theft and the Israeli policies of apartheid and racism that systematically systematically terrorize and dehumanize an entire population on a daily basis simply because of their ethnicity. And we're here today because we know that that is not all right. right. And, so, and we're also here because we know that in any, any war between the colonizer and the colonized, between the oppressor and the oppressed, we stand firmly on the side of the oppressed because we understand that their struggle is part of our own. And, and especially here in the U.S. when it's our tax dollars that are funding Israeli crimes and funding the war on Gaza at $3.1 billion a year at the same time as Obama and the rest of politicians are saying that we have no money for jobs, we have no money for hurricane relief, and they're in the midst of slashing the education and the, and the health budget, we're here today to stand up to say no more money for Israel's occupation, no more money for Israel's war crimes, end the siege of Gaza, and end the occupation of Palestine. We had dipkins, we had songs, and we all knew where we belonged. We grew crops, life was good, there in the land where Jesus stood. Now we're scattered everywhere, there's no peace anywhere, and I'm just searching for some kind of sign, for some way back to Palestine, I want to go home, I want to go home, I want to go home, I want to go home. I'm here as a Palestinian, uh, as a socially conscious person, and as an American taxpayer. We are complicit in the occupation of the Palestinian people. We are complicit in the oppression. It is our government that gives $3.1 billion a year in mili military aid to Israel. It's our government that gives Apache helicopters and Hellfire missiles and cluster bombs and white phosphorus to an apartheid regime that's using bombs against an open air prison. It's up to us to cut that complicity. That's part of our duty within our communities, within our society, to cut the complicity from the American government. I don't wanna coexist. Not like good guys and bad guys and true lies and propaganda. Put on blackface as cab drivers or deli owners in your racist comedies. Not bomb your Dunkin' Donuts with my kafia. 
fist pound Fox News or let you steal my food and call an Israeli salad. I won't mess with his Ohan or let him turn the rocks of Palestinian children into balloon animals while Israeli soldiers snipe our children's heads, shoulders, knees, and stomachs. Hollywood snipes ears of young ones with lovable tales of blue and white heroes. I'm not looking for your approval, not a token roll or job on my knees scrubbing toilets in Israel's Congress. I'd rather fight with blacks and Latinos against oppression than concede to a mainstream plantation that sees me as other unless I'm checking a college application. I don't believe in the tooth fairy or 2,000 claims of homes you supposedly deserved when people resurrected and walked on water all exist. And a world that fights against racism like Martin and Malcolm Please get old tales of Stephen Biko as a song that never dies, no matter what apartheid makes of our bodies, feeds mouths, and Belfast streets, and resurrects Bobby Sands' message so that we'll never be hungry again. And whether you know it or not, I'm the best solution you have. One man asking for one vote, telling you to look at the sea, and I'll never drive you into it. I'll never return the favor. I'm not outstretching an olive branch and a rifle. I'm extending reality because being surrounded by so-called enemies on your borders is easier than in your towns and election centers. We may not be brothers, but this neighborhood has made us cousins. I don't want to coexist. I want to exist as a human being. And justice will take care of the rest. Thank you all for um, being here. As an Israeli and an American, I follow both news. And yesterday came out a survey that says that 91% of Jewish Israelis support what is going on in Gaza now. A lot of them are calling to increase this operation and basically turn it into a war. The situation is not going to change by us waiting for Israel to start playing fair. The situation is going to change by us making it impossible for Israel to sustain the occupation. And Israel is sustaining the occupation through U.S. and E.U. funding. And all the pressure that we can apply is the only thing that is going to make a difference and stop that. Four years ago, I stood in Israel in protests similar to these, and I say similar because in Israel we stand about 50 people and 150 cops, and we are booed and harassed and hated. The movement in Israel is not big enough and strong enough to make the changes that needs to be made for human rights. That is what we need to do by being here and by joining the BDS movement. Please do everything that you can to fight injustice. Occupation is a crime. From Iraq to Palestine. Occupation is a crime. From the river to the sea, Palestine will be free. From the river to the sea, Palestine will be free. From the river to the sea, Palestine will be free. First of all, I would like to thank you all for coming out in this rain to express solidarity with our people in Gaza, living under constant Israeli bombardment and killings. I am a Palestinian who was shot by the Israeli forces five times in my chest and back, and they wanted me dead. And I am here to tell them that we, the Palestinian people, are revolutionaries and we are here to stay in our country and defend our people and our land. We believe in peace, but we believe in justice. Occupation and peace cannot coexist. Siege on Gaza 
and the imprisonment of more than 1.6 million Palestinians is illegal. I am a Palestinian journalist who has been reporting on Gaza and on the situation in Palestine since many years now and I've been following those crimes starting with the crime that was committed against me and against my friends who were killed and maimed and imprisoned in Palestine. The war on Gaza is a war on the civilians. Every single day we are seeing more children, infants, women, and elderly being massacred in Gaza. I, yesterday I was reporting and writing some articles about what's happening. I could not publish some of the images that I received from Gaza, burnt infants, burnt children, and this war is still ongoing. There have been 45 Palestinians killed including around 12 children and the war is still ongoing and Netanyahu and his cabinet already approved the ground invasion and they gathered the troops to march towards Gaza under the guise of defense. When you are an occupier, you are an offender. You are an attacker and Palestinians and any nation that lives under occupation has the right to defend itself. We as Palestinian people and any nation that lives under any sort of occupation has the right to defend itself and to defend its people and to defend its land. We will not surrender and the Palestinians are chanting in Gaza under the missiles and telling the occupiers that the missiles of hatred and the shells of the occupiers can never silence the spirit and the will of the people who are determined to live as any other nation in this universe to live as an independent nation on their national soil. We, I've seen through the years, and by the way, I was shot by the undercover forces in 1991. And I've seen through the years so many young Palestinians getting shot in their backs, targeted in their spines, and abused by the soldiers who shot them. It's a systematic policy that we learned so many years ago. The soldiers who shot me started, after I fell onto the ground, started kicking me. And the guy who shot me told me, you were supposed to be dead after all what we did and you are still alive. And I am here to tell them, yes, I am still alive and the Palestinian nation is still alive and will continue to resist the racist occupation until freedom, until liberation, until true justice. And I also want to salute you all and all nations that went out to protest this war in every part of the world for your courage to say the truth and to stand with the truth. We have seen protests in every part of the world, including in Tel Aviv. And we want to tell those people who went to the streets and took off to the streets to express solidarity with the occupied Palestinian nation that justice will always prevail.
and we shall overcome. I heard him speaking to the Congress, getting his 29th standing over. He said, we need our protection from those terrorists, don't you know? Well, if you want security, it seems only fair that you should also grant it to the people over there. And although the question seems to be a sin, just where your country ends and your neighbor's lands begin. Where are your borders? Where are your borders? Where are your borders? Where are your borders? He said, we're the only democracy in the Middle East. Or actually, he said, the only viable one at least. The PA isn't viable, because they didn't vote Abbas. They voted for those terrorists that they call Hamas. So we can't recognize them, though we wish they would agree that we stole their land quite fairly here by the Mediterranean Sea. We stole it fair and square. We stole it just like you. If you don't like it, you're an anti-Semite, whether you're a Muslim or a Jew. Okay, right. But tell me, where are your borders? Where are your borders? Where are your borders? Where are your borders? Thanks everybody for coming out. Um, and I just want to talk a little bit about um, how we're hearing about this in the media and what a response of uh, the US government has been. I think I turned the page to the New York Times yesterday and what they reported was that Three Israelis were murdered, but 14 Palestinians happened to be killed. One is murdered, one is killed. And in every single article, in every single reporting, what we hear is that this is a retaliation. It's an absolute lie. What they don't talk about is Ahmed Kabbal, who was shot on November 7th, a 13-year-old who was out in the streets playing soccer as an Israeli sniper in a helicopter loomed, was flying around and shot him and killed him. That's what they don't talk about. They don't talk about that from January until November 6, 79 Palestinians in Gaza were murdered and zero Israelis were killed during that time. What kind of retaliation is that? We can't talk about retaliation when since 2006, Palestinians in Gaza have been kept in an open prison. There is a wall on every side of Gaza. And an Israeli general put it this way. What they're doing is they're putting the Palestinians in Gaza on a diet. His words, not mine. They are literally counting the calories of how much they can let in to make the Palestinians suffer without them dying in mass. That's the kind of cynicism that the Israeli government is doing. You can't talk about retaliation when people, when one in seven children in Gaza suffer from stunted growth because of the malnutrition. You can't talk about retaliation when the Palestinians in Gaza have no medicine on the shelves in the hospitals. You can't talk about retaliation when your children, when your mothers, when your brothers, when your fathers have been being killed every single day. That is not retaliation, that is murder. And it has been murder. For real! You can't talk about retaliation when Palestinians have to walk on different sides of the street in places like Hebron when they can't drive on the same roads as Israeli settlers simply because of their ethnicity. You can't talk about that. We call that racism. What has been ongoing and what continues to happen today is an ethnic cleansing of the Palestinian people, a colonial process that continues till today. And what has the response of the U.S. government been? More money. More money. Exactly. The House of Representatives and the Senate came out both and said, you, voted that Israel, in support of Israel. Obama, we've been here before. Obama four years ago stayed shamefully silent as the bombs on Gaza were being dropped. Four years later, 
He isn't just shamefully silent. He is out there defending Israel's right to do this. And the idea that they're helplessly standing by, that they're, they're requesting that this gets de-escalated is an absolute farce. It is an absolute farce. Three billion dollars a year in military aid to Israel. Every bomb that drops on a Palestinian child is a bomb that is paid for and supplied by the U.S. government. Yeah, you And we have to, together, open the... We have to organize ourselves and continue to come out in solidarity with the Palestinian people. I want to just say a couple things that Remy uh, touched on because I think it's absolutely critical. A couple years ago, we had the revolution in Egypt the revolution in Tunisia, and since then we've had the Occupy movement here in the United States. And what's become absolutely clear is that we have a 99% that is up against a 1%. This is why the signs in Egypt, in Tahrir Square, and the signs in Madison, Wisconsin, and occupations around the country, there was solidarity all around the world. And we know that the tear gas canisters that were used to disperse the protesters here the ones that hit Scott Olson in his head in Oakland, the tear gas canisters that are used on protesters in Egypt, and the tear gas canisters that are used on protesters in the West Bank are made here in the United States. And we also know that police departments here in the U.S. and across the Arab world go to Israel to get police training so they can go back and suppress their own protesters and suppress their own populations. And finally, I think we have to be absolutely clear that this is a struggle that we all have to fight together. Since 2001, Islamophobia and the fight against terrorism is what they've used to justify billions of dollars that are going into the Department of Homeland Security. And that has militarized our police forces, it is terrorizing our Muslim communities, and it is the same militarization of the police force that is attacking our black and brown communities here in the United States as well. We have to organize together and fight back. And we know this isn't going away, so thank you everybody for coming out, but we don't want to have to continue to come out every time that Israel does this. We have to organize ourselves. There's a lot of organizations out here from Jewish Voice for Peace to Americans United for Palestinian Human Rights to Students United for Palestinian Human Rights. Everybody should join an organization. If you want to fight back, that's what we have to do. We have to get organized and we have to continue the struggle. talk about our own society's complicity. So we, you have a local BDS group here and that's going to be the next poem that I'm going to talk about. Um, 
it's really important what the other speaker said as well. This isn't simply about Palestine. This isn't about a nation state. This isn't about waving a flag. But it's about a system of oppression. Whether we're standing against police brutality, whether we're standing against stop and frisk, whether we're standing against Barack Obama kicking out 1.5 million undocumented people, or drone bombing Iraq, Afghanistan, Pakistan, Yemen, and Somalia, whether we're standing at US, against US militarism abroad, at home, or Israeli aggression, occupation, apartheid, and at the cleansing, it's that fight against injustice that binds us together. So thank you guys so much for coming out tonight, for showing love for the Palestinian people. And I just want to reaffirm how important action is. This next poem was called, This Poem Will Not End Apartheid. I'm on the organizing committee for the U.S. campaign for the academic and cultural boycott of Israel. We have a local BDS group. In terms of culture, in terms of art, the way in which Israel uses culture and art as propaganda and part of its branding campaign to, to portray itself as a liberal democracy, which is a bogus concept, when it occupies four million people, when it, when it relegates Palestinians living inside of the state of Israel to third class status with more than 32 laws that discriminate against them. When you talk about a refugee population that can't return to their homes, but if somebody in this audience had a Jewish grandmother, they can go and return and settle to where my family was ethnically cleansed from. This is apartheid. This is a two-tier system. This is the kind of anti-democratic values that we need to be standing against. Whether injustice at home or injustice abroad, we need to be standing with oppressed and indigenous people. So this poem is called, This Poem Will Not End Apartheid. This poem will not end apartheid. My words, no matter how beautiful, clever, or carefully strung together, will not end the occupation, allow the refugees to return, or create equality within Israeli society. The status quo, it's a fantasy. Telling us it's okay to sit on our hands, called political art propaganda, rather than those who politicize our lives, propagandists. Every American should ask themselves this question. Why are bombs and white phosphorus getting dropped on open air prisons? With money that should be going to pay for your medical expenses. And dear academics and leftists, I appreciate your books on Israeli massacres, but you refuse to take the bullets out of IDF guns with your stance as the problem. It's not just the occupation or putting a better face on Zionism. Because 750,000 Palestinians were displaced before those settlements were constructed, half of them, before Israel was created. We don't need another book explaining the situation. We need a lesson plan to stop the next bomb from dropping. Silence is complicity. Over-intellectualization tells us to theorize on the power of art. While farmers are kicked off land, children are stolen on the way to school, people are caged and beaten and split from loved ones, bombed and broken in open-air prisons, bought and paid for with our tax dollars. We're part of the problem. That is not theoretical. I don't want to hug a segregationist, wave to at a separate water fountain, or appeal to from the back of the bus. A day will come, I swear to you all, when Zionists cower in embarrassment, deny involvement like those who profited off of Stephen Biko's lifeless body and Bobby Sands' empty stomach. So yes, I'm going to boycott all Israeli products and go to the root of the conflict because settlements are just the branches of the Zionist program. Every 729 cultural institution and dialogue farce, from Sabra to Ahava, Max Brenner to Aroma, Level of Ive and Motorola, signing a two-year contract stacks up little to 63 years of continued ethnic cleansing. Finally, to all you artists building bridges, between apartheid and normalization, you serve an agenda which rebrands colonialism as enlightened liberalism. Concerts, ballets, and raves in Israel's Sun City. A haven and party stop for pink washers who callously ignore Palestinian LGBT groups fighting against all systems of oppression. Palestinian civil society has spoken. Don't cross this picket line or cash in that paycheck sign apartheid. Put down stolen beauty, cancel that gig, and join the rest of us on the right side of history. Left, Latino, Arabic and white. No, no racist war, no war, no more. No more. Defend our human no rights. Left, Latino, Arabic and white. No racist war, no more, no more. Defend our human rights. Left, Latino, Arabic and white. No racist war, no more, no more. Defend our human rights.